Emma and I took a few days in a friend's car to drive around the island and see some of the sights. These included waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning to drive halfway across the island and up a switchbacking mountain highway to the summit of Haleakala, the volcano that makes up the eastern half of Maui. Sunrise was breathtaking. As was the wind, I only brought a single coat to Maui, and I only used it on Haleakala, and I was still freezing. We weren't the only ones up there. Sunrise from the summit is a popular tourist draw, and brings several tour buses up the volcano on a daily basis. The upper slopes of Haleakala are part of Haleakala National Park, home of many endangered plants and animals, including a rare variety of silver sword that grows only on these slopes. It's also the home of Haleakala Observatory. At 10,023 feet, we were above one-third of the Earth's atmosphere. We hiked around the summit for a few hours on a trail called Sliding Sands. Some tour groups will take you horseback riding along the trail, while others will shuttle you up the mountain, give you a bike, and let you coast all the way down the mountain highway. Though there may have been volcanic eruptions in Haleakala within the last 500 years, Haleakala Crater was not created by a massive volcanic blast, but rather by wind and glaciers. The basin is riddled with smaller volcanic cones, evidence of relatively recent volcanic activity. The crater itself is seven miles long and two miles wide. Emma has a post about hiking up Kaupo Gap, which eventually leads into the crater. This guy was really excited about it. A massive cloud bank was sweeping down the basin, but I was more interested in the rocks, which were as light as cotton balls. When we saw the horses coming, do you know what we did? Yeah, that's right, stood quietly on the trail side. As we were driving back down, it gave me a good idea of what it felt like to drive above the clouds. Emma was pretty excited, too.